So this is just a short video tutorial on the main features of the JSR bulb ramper shield and the JSR bulb ramper standalone. On the top here I have a shield. It's got the pins on the back so you need to connect it to an Arduino Uno to make it complete. And on the bottom here I have a standalone. It's got the battery pack on the back and it's got the on off switch on the front so you can turn it on and uh, run it this way. Both of these you can run it with a 12 volt external either on the back there for the standalone or plug it into the uh, Arduino and run it that way. And the Arduino also has the option for the USB power. Just want to show you the cables that I include when you buy the uh, ball bumper shield. You have a shutter cable here, large end and a small end. Large end goes into the camera port and the small end goes into your camera. If you need the Canon N3 adapter, I can also supply that as well. In which case, just connect it like this and then this will fit into your 50D, 7D or 5D or whichever um, model needs this. I also supply a PC sync cable here. This end goes into your flash port on your camera. You may need to get yourself a little uh, hot shoe adapter like this. It plugs in and this slides onto the flash port. And because this is only a foot long, kind of short, I also include a 3.5 millimeter extension cable. So this plugs in here. This plugs into your camera. And then the other end of this plugs into the hot shoe monitoring input on the JSR. When you first turn on your JSR bulb ramper shield, it'll go to the main menu. And from here you can select setup, run, or config by pushing the appropriate button. Uh, if we push setup, we'll be in the setup one page, S1. You can scroll through the pages by pushing the menu right button or the menu left button. By pushing OK, take you back to the main screen. Pushing OK from the main screen will turn on the onboard flashlight. Pushing OK will turn it off. So I'm going to go to setup. Uh, page S1, we can set the mode, bulb ramper, or intervalometer. With intervalometer, we don't need the, the hot shoe feedback. We do need it if we're on uh, bulb mode. Page S2 is where we set the interval time, which is the seconds between uh, each picture. So you can set an up or down. Top left button will reset it to the page defaults. Page S3 is the start exposure where we can set the start uh, exposure for the time lapse. If your camera is turned on and it's in bulb mode and the cables are connected, you can push the TS button, which is the test button, and it'll fire a test shot. You can view on your LCD screen on your camera and see if the uh, exposure is how you want it. If not, you can adjust it until uh, the exposure is um, set to your liking. Page S4 is where you set the number of pictures. You can move the cursor with the top right button and then uh, change the selection with the up and down. Pushing the top left button will reset it to zero, which is also set for uh, continuous shooting. Page S5 is the stops per hour, which is the rate of ramping uh, during the time lapse. This is also easily adjustable uh, while the time lapse is running, so you can just set it to a ballpark figure and change it later. Page S6 is the stops per 100 pictures, which is also a measure of uh, the ramping rate. You can change this, and it'll also change on this page too. It's just a different uh, way of showing the same information. And we're back to the main uh, menu here. Everything's set up to go, so we'll push run to start the time lapse. And now we're in the run page, page R1. Ball ramper is active, we have active or paused. Note it's still running, it's just the exposure is staying the same between pictures, it's not actually ramping, but I'll leave it on active. Page R2 is the shutter time. The first number is the shutter time it's, it wants and the second number is the actual shutter time that is measured the camera um, has done. P 
page R3, you can see the number of pictures taken as well as the number of stops. Page R4, this is again where we can adjust the rate in stops per hour. Page R5, we can adjust the rate in stops per 100 pictures. Page R6 is where we change the stops when we're going to be stepping the ISO or the aperture. So during a sunset, you want to increase the ISO or decrease the aperture, so you would push ISO plus. Here we can set the stop change. The default is one stop, but you can set it to uh, two stops if you're removing a two-stop ND filter, or you can set it to, say, a third of a stop or whatever fraction you want if you'll just be adjusting the aperture or the ISO in parts of a stop. But to change it one stop, you set one and then you press OK. It'll go back to that page. After the current picture it's taking, it will um, be paused and it'll show you to adjust the camera then press OK. So I'm going to adjust the camera one stop and everything is set to go. I will push OK and it will continue taking the time lapse. So that was R6. R7 is the interval ramp. You can see the interval is the bottom there, 5 seconds. By pushing the up button, uh, we can adjust the ramp there. So now it's adding 2 hundredths of a second to the interval. So you can see it's increasing there. You can do it in a positive or negative direction. To stop inter interval ramp, set 0. R8 is the interval oscillator. So the top one is where you set the range. So if I set uh, 1 second, and the bottom is where you set the step. So if I set 1 tenth of a second, then the interval will increase by 0.1 seconds until it is six seconds and then it will inc it will decrease by 0.1 seconds until it's four seconds and that's set by the range it'll be between four and six seconds and changing by 0.1 second per uh, per step To stop the interval ramp, just set them to zero. Page R9 is the open delay and close delay. The open delay is the time in seconds between triggering the shutter to open and the time, it's at, and the time it actually opens. And the close delay is the time it takes for the shutter to close after the signal is released. If one of your wires breaks or there's a disconnect, you'll get this message. Check wires to camera, press OK. So then you would just make sure your wires are connected properly and then press OK to continue the time lapse. That's known as the continuity sensor and it works for, for either wire. There, so I need to check the wires, so I'll just double check them, make sure everything is good, and then press OK to continue. Go back to the main menu, and instead of saying menu up here, it'll say end, so to stop the time lapse, you just push end. It's also nice to know that you can go back to setup here, and you can change the, uh, you can change the interval while it's running. You can change the number of pictures, you can change the stops per hour, all this is adjustable while, while it's running. I'm going to push end here, and I'm going to go into the config menu. Here we can set the LCD color to red, green, blue, or any color in between. You can also adjust the uh, 
LCD brightness. Page C1, C2 is the aux output. You have off, send low pulse, send high pulse, on with camera, or act as an external intervalometer. And just have a look at the user's manual to see what all these different modes do. Page C3 is where you can set the focus off and on and how much uh, focus time you want. C4 is the buffer time. C5 you have a voltage readout and you also can set the LEDs auto dim, bright, and off. C6 system reset and export data. C7 alert LED and change pause off, off and on. And C8 continuity sensor off and on and X time auto or you can set the time that, that you want. So that's about it. Um, hope it made sense and I hope this is useful during your time lapses.